Good morning. This is your wake up call. Wake up call 017. Good plans. Wake up call 017. Good plans. Hey, this is another wake up call with the Faith for My Generation podcast. I'm thankful that you're listening. I'm thankful that you're watching if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram. Hey, if you haven't found the podcast channel and you are watching by video, keep in mind on Mondays I release a video podcast called Wake Up Calls. But every Thursday I do a longer teaching session on Thursday. So come find me on Apple Podcast or Spotify, any platform that has podcasts. You can find me, Faith for My Generation Podcast. Uh, you'll see the logo with the hands, with the flame inside those hands. And that's what the purpose of the Faith for My Generation podcast is. It is to fuel that flame, that fire of devotion to God uh, with the teaching of the Word of God. And I've got another wake-up call for you today. Wake-up call 017, good plans. Good plans. I want to look at a common, commonly read, commonly quoted portion of Scripture. Sometimes people catch a little flack for quoting it. But I want us to look at the intent and the biblical principle behind what God's saying here. I believe that you can look throughout the Bible and though there are specific times where God speaks to a specific person or people, you can always see the principle of His truth in the Word. 2 Peter 1 tells us that the Word of God was written down by holy men of old, moved on by the Holy Ghost, as the King James would say. You know, and it also says right before that, there is no private interpretation of prophecy, that when God speaks, He's speaking to all. And so if he says something to one person or to another, there may be specific application, go here, do this. But you can always see the principle of his truth regardless of who he's talking to or what book of the Bible it is. So I want us to look at Jeremiah 29, verse 10. It says this, For thus says the Lord, After seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place, that place being Israel. The promised land. Verse 11. You've probably heard this one. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all your heart. Verse 14. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I've driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. You've probably heard that verse 11. Maybe you've seen it on some artwork. You've been shopping at the TJ Maxx at the Ross. You, and you've seen that written on an artwork or a poster or something or a Facebook status. Sometimes people catch flack for it. There's some people, well, that, that wasn't written to you. That was written to the people of Israel in, in captivity. Yeah, absolutely. It was. Sure was. But there's a biblical principle here. There's a few things that you need to know when you approach Scripture. One, God is not a respecter of persons. What does that mean? God doesn't play favorites. You know what? Parents, wrongly, if they do, but sometimes parents can play favorites. Teachers can play favorites. Regular old Joe Blows can have a favorite friend. Uh, bosses can have favorite employees. People can play favorites. God doesn't. The, foot of the, the ground at the foot of the cross is equal. God doesn't play favorites. And what do I mean by that? I mean, as Scripture says, God's not a respecter of persons, that if you approach God, as in the last wake-up call, wake-up call 016, impossible, where we looked at Hebrews 11.6. If you approach God in faith, He will reward you. And there's several principles here that we can see. Hebrews 3 and 4 tell us that we are to look to the Old Testament and look to the people of Israel. Think about that. Hebrews 3 and 4 tell us specifically, look to Israel. Look to the people and the testimony of the Old Testament so that you can learn what are we to learn? To take the Word of God and mix it with faith. Because so many times Israel had the Word but would not submit and mix it with faith. And they suffered the consequences of it. So let's talk about a few things that we can see here. A couple things. Sin always produces destruction. Romans 6.23. Now notice we're in the Old Testament. Jeremiah is prophesying to the people of Israel. But the principle we can see is sin always produces destruction. What does Romans 6.23 say? 
I probably could paraphrase quote it, but let's get it word for word and let me read it. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life in Christ Jesus for our Lord. Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. What is a wage? Payment for work. So we could say it this way. The paycheck for the working of sin is death. You do the work of sin and your paycheck for that work. You send in your invoice. This is the sinning I've done. And the paycheck you get is death. Sin produces destruction. Sin produces death. The people of Israel time and time again fell into sin. And time and time and again, because God is merciful, rich in mercy, Ephesians 2, 4, sent prophets, anointed by the Spirit of God, to tell them the truth. Turn from this wickedness. Sometimes they would, and then they'd fall back into sin. And only in the mind of God do we know when late, you know, when it's just too late. I can't say, you know, this is the amount of sin you can get away with before it's too late. I can't do that. But I do know this from the testimony of Scripture. In the mind and heart of God, He knows the heart of men and He sees, you know what, this is it. I've given mercy and now I have to bring judgment. It's a fearful thing, but it's true. So God brings judgment against Israel. And He tells them, you're going to go in captivity for 70 years. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to allow my protection of you to drop. I'm going to remove my protection from you because we were in covenant and covenant requires participation of both people. Of course, God always fulfilled His part, but Israel did not. They broke the covenant and so now they're no longer protected by God. And God allows Babylon to come in and take them captive. And then He even, out of goodness and kindness, tells them, you're going into captivity because of your sin for 70 years. Now, God tells them the end from the beginning. That's the way God works. He always tells you the end from the beginning. And He says, At the end of these days, after your judgment has been served, your sentence has been served, your judgment has been fulfilled, I'll come visit you. And He makes this point. He's going to, one, perform His good word. Verse 10 tells us that. He will perform His good word. God desires to perform His word in you. It's just that simple. If God's promised it in His Word, He wants to bring it to pass in your life. You have to believe that God desires to fulfill His Word in you. Don't resist God's Word. Accept it. How do you accept God's Word? Yield to it. Obey it. Live it. Pray it. Confess it. Meditate on it. Let it become the walk and the nature and the talk of your life. Let the Word of God rule your heart. Because that's what God wants to fulfill. Verse 10, I will visit you and perform my good word. He wants to perform His word in you. And His word is good, not bad. Verse, two, uh, verse 11, God has thoughts. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God has thoughts. What kind of thoughts does God think? Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has thoughts of peace. He wants to give you peace. He has thoughts that are kind, that are merciful. Think about it. God sent His only begotten Son so that we could believe on Jesus and be saved from sin. That's a thought of goodness. That's a thought of hope. That's a thought of an expected end, as the King James would say. That's a thought that is not evil. Salvation is not an evil thought. It's a good thought. It's a, it's a peaceful thought. Romans 5.1 tells us that we have peace with God. We're no longer enemies of God, but we've been made peace. Made, peace has been made on our behalf by the blood of Jesus. Ephesians and Hebrews both tell us that the blood of Jesus draws us close to God. That's a good thought. That's the thought that God has towards us. I'll save my people by sending my son. The next thing you can see in verse 12 is answered prayer. God has a desire to answer you. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. God has a desire to answer your prayer. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Verse 15. And if we know He hears us, we have the things that we've asked of. 
God desires to fulfill His Word in you through the channel of prayer. You have not because you ask not, James 4.2. Get busy asking God to fulfill His Word in your life. Yield to God, submit to God, enter into times of prayer, continual prayer all the time, as the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing. Continually pray to God and pray His Word. I've said this before, but I always pray with an open Bible. What do I mean by that? I mean I'm always praying and rehearsing, as the book of Isaiah says, I'm bringing to God to His remembrance His Word. Not because He's forgetful, but because I need to hear what He has thought of me what He desires of me and what He desires to do in me. I, it's for my benefit that I rehearse or confess or pray God's Word so that I can have my mind renewed, so that I can fill my heart with faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And as I pray God's Word, He hears me. He listens to me. Verse 13, seek and find. When you seek God, you'll find Him. That's the plan that God has for you. God never planned for Him to be hard to be found. I just wish I could find God. If you'll seek Him, you'll find Him. It's that simple. You won't not find God if you're seeking Him. Look for God. He'll be found. You will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. Are you seeking God with all your heart? Because when you give all of yourself to Him, He will be found. Last thing, the Lord is found. Verse 14, I will be found by you. God desires for you to find Him, to know Him, and to be in relationship with Him. These are the good plans that God has for you. He has for everyone. See, there's a couple things that we can see here. In this day and age, I just want to give you a little bit of context for this. The prophet Jeremiah, he's prophesying and he sends this letter to the people that are already in captivity in Babylon. And there's three groups of people that hear this letter. There's one that have no hope. In the beginning of this chapter, Jeremiah 29, there are some people who have no hope because they have been taken from their homes, they've been taken from their families, and they're hopeless. And Jeremiah tells them by the Spirit of the Lord, look, you're suffering because of the consequence of sin that you brought upon yourself. So now that you're in captivity, this is what you need to do. You need to build houses, you need to plant gardens, you need to eat their fruit, you need to marry, have children. You need to continue to seek peace for the city that you're in. Even though you're a captive of it, pray for the city that you're in. Because you're going to be here for 70 years. He's trying to give hope to those that are hopeless. There's another group of people that are here that Jeremiah is speaking to, and it's those people with false hope. See, they were some fakers. Jeremiah 29.8 says there's some prophets... They're prophesying, but they're not prophesying by the Spirit of the Lord. They're having dreams, but they're not dreams of the Spirit. They're dreams because they ate too much pizza. No, I'm kidding. They probably didn't eat too much pizza. But they're dreams of their flesh. They're going around telling the people that are in captivity in Babylon, Oh, don't worry about it. God's going to deliver us in about three and a half weeks. No need to build houses. No need to submit to authority here. No need to get married and continue you know, worshiping God in synagogues and establishing somewhere to worship and honoring the Sabbath. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't worry about it. We'll be out here in no time. Well, Jeremiah's telling them, no, they're liars because the word of the Lord has already come and said that you will be in captivity for 70 years. So, don't be without hope. Have hope. Even while you're here, seek the mercy of God to prosper in this place of captivity. And then lastly, there's the people who have true hope. And those are the verses we just read. True hope is founded on the revealed Word of God. True hope is founded on the revealed Word of God. When you get an understanding of God's Word, and remember the Holy Spirit reveals the Word of God and what it is. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would come and teach us His words. As you commit to study the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will understand and have your mind renewed to the truth of God. And that's what true hope is built on. It's built on the Word of God. I want you to know this, that God has a good plan for you. If you're listening and you happen to be scrolling, you're watching this, you've made it to this point, you're listening to the podcast, you've made it to this point, and you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know this may 
naturally in my mind it may seem a little far-fetched because why at this point have you listened for about 14 minutes to a guy talking about the Bible? But I know this, there's people that are hearing this and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. You've never accepted the Lordship of Christ and, and given yourself to Him. What are you waiting for? There's no better time to receive salvation and life eternal that begins right now than this very moment that you're hearing me speak about Jesus. Because God has a good plan for you. But you'll never access and live in that plan that God has for you unless Jesus is Lord of your life. And it's this simple. When you believe in your heart that God raised His Son from the dead and you confess Jesus Lord of your life, you shall be saved. For there is no other name man can call upon and be saved. Call on the name of Christ now. Believe in Him. Believe that He is who He says He is and that He'll do a work that no person can do in you, which is make you a brand new creation. And you'll be saved. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, DM me. Let me know. I'd love to bless you and, and pray for you as you embark on the greatest journey of your life. And I'm thankful that you're faithfully listening. Those that are listening to the Faith for My Generation podcast, thank you for commenting, sharing, leaving the five-star review. Always appreciate it. And uh, hey, we'll catch you this Thursday. Remember, we are the faithful. I'll see you next time. God bless. Mm-hmm.